Have you ever wondered what the universe looks like? Imagine you could hold the universe in your hand, like holding a snow globe. Although the snow globe analogy seems appealing, you'd have to consider what happens if you walked along the surface of that snow globe. Could you go back to your starting point? While it sounds absurd to travel across the universe and end up where you started, scientists have pondered this very question for decades. Snow globes are just one way to conceptualize the geometry of our universe. Instead, physics equations play a pivotal role in unraveling our universe's mysteries. Let's start with Einstein's theory of general relativity, which tells us that gravity can alter space-time itself. For example, gravity for massive objects, like the sun, bend light, leading to phenomena such as gravitational lensing. The blue ring in this image is a magnified lens of a galaxy even farther away. But how does gravity shape the entire universe? To delve into this intriguing inquiry, let's explore the geometry of our universe and how scientists determine it. We'll examine three possible geometries, closed, open, and flat, and discuss what each means cosmologically. Current observations suggest we live in one of these types of universes. A universe shaped like a snow globe has a closed geometry with positive mathematical curvature. This means that if you shot off light that was originally parallel, that light would end up intersecting and converging. When we talk about the path that light traces, we call it a geodesic. The shortest distance between two points in a closed universe isn't a straight line, but rather a curved geodesic. If you drew a triangle in a closed universe, the sum of the interior angles would actually be greater than 180 degrees. Let's contrast this with an open universe where there is negative curvature. An open universe is very different from a closed universe. For example, parallel light rays will attempt to diverge rather than converge as they do in a closed universe. That means those light rays will become further apart over time. If you drew a triangle in an open universe, the sum of the interior angles would be less than 180 degrees. Lastly, there's a flat universe, which might seem more familiar. Its curvature is zero, so parallel light rays stay parallel, and triangles have angles that add up to 180 degrees, just like in Euclidean geometry, the geometry you encounter in everyday life. Most evidence today points to a flat universe, but how did scientists reach this conclusion? To determine this idea, we need to consider two factors, the expansion of the universe and the contracting forces of gravity. Our universe is currently expanding, with its expansion rate determined by the Hubble constant. Let's use an analogy to illustrate how gravity and the universe's expansion affect our universe's geometry. Imagine parallel light rays in an expanding universe without matter. They diverge as seen in an open universe. But, if we introduce strong gravitational forces, these rays could remain parallel or even converge, counteracting the result of expansion. The interplay between the current universe's expansion rate, Hubble's constant, and the attractive forces of matter and energy define the universe's geometry. This leads us to the concept of critical density for a flat universe, which precisely balances expansion and contraction. Surprisingly, this density is only about 5.5 protons per cubic meter. If the actual density is higher or lower, the universe would be closed or open, respectively. So how do scientists determine the actual universe's critical density? We found that 5% of the universe's density is composed of baryonic matter, matter that emits light, including stars, planets, and visible galaxies. However, this raises a question. Given that the critical density is defined as 1, why does only 5% of the matter consist of ordinary baryonic matter? Here, dark matter and dark energy come into play. Consider our Milky Way galaxy. Stars orbit its center at speeds proportional to the galaxy's mass, yet, when we compare the predicted and observed rotation rates of galaxies, most galaxies rotate faster than predicted by luminous matter alone. This implies the presence of invisible matter, known as dark matter. Dark matter behaves gravitationally like regular matter, but does not emit light or interact electromagnetically. Dark matter accounts for 25% of the universe's energy, but we still don't fully understand its properties. Similarly, you may wonder where the remaining 70% of energy density comes from. This energy is represented by dark energy, a mysterious force seemingly accelerating the universe's expansion. 
Dark energy can be conceptualized as a vacuum energy, occupying empty space and exerting a negative pressure, akin to a repulsive gravitational force. Dark energy pushes galaxies farther apart. When you account for these three types of energies, you see that we achieve nearly a 1.0 perfect density of our universe between matter, dark matter, and dark energy. It's very peculiar, actually, that our universe is flat, because flatness requires a very precise ratio. We've covered a lot of information today, so let's recap. There are three types of geometries and curvatures generally associated with our universe, closed, open, and flat. Each geometry influences parallel rays of light in differing ways, from converging to diverging or remaining parallel. The precise amount of matter and energy in our universe versus the universe's current expansion rate influences the geometry of our universe. By examining the amount of matter, dark matter, and dark energy in our universe, current evidence informs us that the geometry of our universe is flat. While we have made significant strides in astronomy research, much remains to explore in the realm of cosmology. Further measurements and insights into the properties of dark matter and dark energy could enhance our understanding of the universe's very nature.